Want to use plates in your mosaics? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the tools that I use, as well as how to retain most of the pattern out of the plate. And I'm also going to show you how to achieve flat pieces to use in your mosaic. And I'm going to show you that right now. When I'm cutting plates, I generally use three types of tools. I use the double wheeled nippers, and I use these for about 80, 90% of the time. I use side biters and also compound nippers. Now, they will achieve what I really need to get done. However, there are other tools on the market like uh, ring saws, which enable you to cut around detailed patterns and you can get those, and that allows you to get that pattern out in one piece. Uh, there's also a wet saw, which will enable you to cut in a straight line so as the plate doesn't fracture. But all those tools cost extra money. And I find that by using these tools, I'm able to refine my skills and also it gives me great pleasure in knowing that I've actually accomplished that with just hand tools. But there are instances where those tools do come in handy, the ring saw and also the wet saw. Now, when you were looking at plates, don't just buy any plate because you think you might need it. Buy for a project or buy a plate because it is really unusual, it's got a great pattern or it's got embossing in it because otherwise you'll end up with a heap of plates. And because plates are made differently, then you may find that if you end up with a heap of, you know, particular plates, you might find, well, gee, I don't like those because they don't cut, you know, really well, or they're very difficult to cut, or they crumble, or whatever the case may be. So try and buy plates that you know you're going to use for a project or that are unusual. Now, if you're given plates, that's a different thing because you, you grab those plates and you may use them. And if you don't, and in years down the track, you can always throw those plates out or recycle them to the thrift store or op shop. Now, when you're looking at cutting a plate, uh, sometimes the magic works and you cut it exactly where you want it to cut. And other times the magic doesn't and the plate will cut through a motive or a focal point or something like that. So that's just the nature of the beast. So the more you work with them, the better off you will get in determining how that plate or the best way that plate is going to cut. Now, when you're looking at cutting a plate, you need to look at what you want out of that plate. What is it that you're actually after? Is it the centerpiece or is it some part of the rim? For instance, on this particular piece here, this little plate, this has a little blue bird on it. Now you would need to decide when you cut that, if you cut it here, it could fracture there, but it could go on an angle and you could cut through the blue bird. So you need to look at and go, do I want this? Do I want this? Do I want this? Or do I want this? Because that would determine where you cut the plate, which is really important because you want to maximize what you get out of it in one piece. So as when you cut that piece up, you can then go, okay, I'm gonna cut it exactly where I want, so I don't wanna cut it through the bluebird. Whereas if you just get a plate and you just cut it anywhere, yeah, look, it, it may work, but it's best if you look at it and you get uh, the cut where you want it to go. Now, some people will put plates in a bag and just get a hammer and smash it. Well, that works and that's all fine and dandy, but the, the problem with that is that you may crush the bluebird or you may go through a motive or an emblem that you really want and you want it in one piece. So using these tools enables you to do that rather than you know put in bag and smash it up. One important point that you need to consider when cutting plates is you need to protect yourself against silica. Now silica is found in plates, it's found in stained glass, it's found in cement, it's found in a lot of products. Now the thing with silica is that you can breathe it in. Now, once you breathe it in, it sits in your lungs and it's irreversible. So if you breathe enough of it in, then 10, 20, 30 years down the track, it will have you will have complications with breathing and a whole host of other problems. So always protect yourself against silica. And that means wearing a certified dust mask against silica. Now, a lot of people just use an ordinary dust mask. They're not good enough because the silica can still go through that mask. Now, if you are 
eating or drinking while you're doing uh, cutting plates, then that is going to pose a problem because when you cut a plate, silica can go into the air and it can settle on your food or in your drink. So always keep your drink and your food away from cutting anything with silica in, such as stained glass, plates, or anything like that. Keep it in a separate room or in a separate area because you don't want to be drinking a cup of coffee or a cold drink and it's laced on top with silica because it will stay in your lungs. So just keep that in mind. It's a very important point. And like I say, you can guard against it. So it's not something to be frightened of. It's just something to be aware of. So that when you're looking at doing something, you're going to be aware and you're going to protect your health because if you don't, you're going to have complications further down the track. Now what we'll do is we'll now cut some plates. So I'll move these tools out the way. I'll use the double wheeled nippers. Now, when you're looking at a plate, sometimes the pattern on the top may not be any good, but it may have a wonderful brand on the bottom. So it's always good to look at the back of the plate to see if it has a good brand because the brand and also the foot area is great to use in mosaics as well. So basically you're going to be using um, the whole plate. So once you cut a plate into sections or into pieces, don't throw anything away because you might end up and use the foot or the brand because it adds interest. So that's just something to go by, uh, like this one here. This brand is not really any good, but the foot you may use, especially if it's a fairly new plate and it hasn't been marked, then that can be really good to use. So anyway, I'll move these plates away. Now, when I'm looking at cutting a plate, I like to look at the overall design as I mentioned before and I have to decide what I'm going to want to cut out of that plate. Am I going to want the rim of it or am I going to want the focal point? Maybe I want the whole thing. So if I'm cutting across this plate, let's say I'm aiming for the focal point, let's see how it cuts if I can get that focal point out in one piece because this is quite a heavy plate and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to cut. Now when you were using your double wheeled nippers, you need to place it on the edge of the plate. Not in here, but on the edge, because that will give you greater force to be able to cut. It's going to have less resistance to cutting the plate. Now, if you're using the side biters, you can use the inside edge like that. And that will allow you to chip off, hopefully, that section of plate. And on these ones, I generally use these to cut to nip the edges like that. If I want to uh, finite the edge on it, I can use the compound nippers. See how neat that is? Now, when you cut a plate, you can also use a grinder to grind the edge if you want. It will, down, will wear down your grinder head more than what stained glass will, but that will enable you to have a smooth edge or you can use sandpaper. But again, if you're not using water, uh, you need to protect yourself from the silica that comes out of this plate. So what we'll do is we'll just get rid of that, move that one across here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to aim to actually cut the plate across here rather than through that design. If I cut through the design, it's not a big problem because I'll just put it back together again. But you know, I, I prefer to try and cut it without going through that design. So I'm going to put it across here and I'm holding it like that, and I'm actually pushing down with my thumb and holding it there, hoping and trying to force the cut across this area. No, nope, it's gonna cut in sections. So in that case, we'll cut it off in sections. Because this has a fairly heavy foot area. But that's okay, it still will work. And what you can do with these is you can put them in here and wear safety glasses. I should have mentioned that earlier because the chips will fly and you can cut them in a bucket or you can uh, cut them outside, which is what I generally do. 
and now we'll try the side biters and see how they go because sometimes you might find you might have better luck with certain tools for your trimming than other tools so just try the tool and see which ones you prefer and then we'll cut off that area again it's on the rim there so that's going to pose a problem but what we can do hold it cut it there you go and then you cut off what you don't want whether you use the side biters or whether you use the compound nippers or whatever you want to use if you just want those red leaf, uh, those green leaves and not the red ones then you can just cut it hope you can see that and you can use the nippers as well if you want to get in there Go. but this plate is uh definitely the pattern is over the 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 rim of it so uh, over the uh, foot area the back of it so that's that is going to create a little bit of a problem in itself but it's quite usable just depends on how much of it you want to use there you go Now that's not going to sit flat because, and hopefully you'll see that there, there's a rise there. So what you can do is actually cut that so it's smaller. And then we're going to cut that as well on the side. We'll use our side biters for that. You have to determine how you're going to cut the plate. Same on this side here. We'll just turn that over and use that. There we go. And that one in there. And that one in there. That will have to be done because it's still on a rise. My big fingers are getting in the way. There you go. So sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't, but it will, that's now sitting flat because uh, I've actually cut the, uh, the plate into several sections. And the more you cut it, the flatter it's going to sit. Now you can of course chip away at this piece if you want to and use that, and that will work quite well because that is totally or, or pretty well almost flat. But you may want to cut that into sections as well just to just to um, make sure it does sit flat but that's what you do and we will see if we can get another piece it's working out which tools to use there we go cut that off get rid of that foot and Let's say that you want this bit here. So you want that to look quite neat. Just trim that up and then the edge. If you don't want that rim. I mean the rim will come in handy but you may not want that. There you go. So it really does depend how you want the plate to look. Now, if I'm going to adhere this with thin set, then that bit of a rise is really not that critical because I can sit that into a bed of thin set so that will sit fairly flat. Whereas if you're not using thin set and you're using uh, glue, then you'll need it to sit flat because the, you, you won't get glue that thick unless you use something like silicon, which I'm not a big fan of. So you can use thin set to adhere that, or you can use glue and cut it up smaller. And like I say, if you want to refine the edges, you can use sandpaper, but, but you need to protect yourself from the silica, or you can use a grinder if you want to do that. As I said, different plates break differently. So you need to work out what you want out of a plate to make it work for you. You know, do you, do you want to use 
uh, this piece in, in its entirety, you may want to leave that rim on it. But either way, uh, and this plate here will give this a bit of a go. Now this has had a backing on it from one of those adhesive plate holder things that you put on the wall. So that may interfere with the braking, but like I say, we'll give it a go. So if you wanted to uh, cut this into sections and you had a wet saw, you would run this through the wet saw and it would cut straight through that. So you could cut it that way. You could cut it also this way. So you would be able to get more of the actual focal points out of it if you used a wet saw. But if you don't have a wet saw, which I don't, I just do it the old fashioned way of just cutting. And again, it's going to depend on the rim. So we'll put it on the edge here and we'll see how we go. See that cuts a lot better that plate. It's a different plate, which enables you to now cut it into sections how you want it. Again, because I'm going to cut down there, I'm going to place it on that edge there. Oh, well, actually we can cut this piece off first because what we're looking at is divide and conquer. Again, we don't want that. So we're cutting out some sections here and we're going to cut that off there. And again, just divide and conquer. It's always good to wear gloves because this is sharp. Plates are sharp. So wear gloves if you feel like you need to. I generally don't. Uh, in this particular case, I don't. So as you can see, different plates are going to break differently. And then we can then trim these up a bit more if we want to. This is actually quite a nice plate, I must say. And you can cut it into shape if you want. Like if you don't want that gold, some people like the gold. If you're grouting, you have to be careful of the gold sometimes because if you become quite rough with it, that can take the gold off depending on the quality of the plate. And that's what it really comes down to, the quality of the plate. So let's just roughly cut that out. And if you want to finite it, you just spend a bit more time on it and you can nip it pretty good. In a lot of cases, you don't need a grinder or sandpaper, but it is personal preference. Just have to take your time and fine nips where you can use this in, like I said before, if you want to do fine nips like that, there you go. So experiment with your tools and look at what works the best for your needs. Because I tend to use quite a few tools. There you go, we'll get rid of that bit there. So there you go. And that's got, this plate actually has a couple of um, raised areas, which I really like. So I'm more inclined to not cut them out because it adds interest into the mosaic that you're doing. But that, that, that's very cute, and that's fairly flat, so you could actually glue that down. But if you wanted to, you could actually cut that in the center to get that, because that's got a bit of a rock to it. So if you're not using thin set, and you're not using silicon, and you're using glue, you could adhere that, but you could also cut it through the center again. And that now sits really flat. Now, in this cross that I've just put up on the screen, you'll see the cream, white cream, it's more of a cream, uh, the mosaic tiles that I've used in it is actually plate, and they don't actually sit totally flat. Now, I wanted that to happen because I wanted some texture and some rising in it and some low points and things like that. So I've actually used that, whereas the areas, the uh, patterned areas around the outside at the points of the cross, I've actually used a pattern plate and that sits flat. So you can actually use plates to create the effect that you want 
one of my favorite uh, types of plate is a textured plate uh, because when you grout, the grout just wipes pretty well off it, but it adds interest rather than just using a flat tiled area or a flat plate like this white. I'll, I prefer a textured look, but it's again, a personal preference. So that's how I cut plates, and I'm sure there's other ways of cutting plates. You get into your own way and you're using your own tools how you want. Um, but again, uh, try and keep a fairly clean work area and watch for those sharp pieces because they can be really quite sharp. So I generally uh, will just use an edge of something to move things out the way. I never run my hands or my fingers over the pieces. But anyway, I hope that's helped you. I hope you can take something away from this and don't forget to put some comments down in the YouTube video on what you prefer to use, the type of plates or how you cut them. Uh, it'll be interesting to let everyone else know uh, if you've got any other pointers. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. Enjoy.